What's up everybody? So this is the app we're going to make today. We have the sign in authentication stream that we made in the last video for provider. And we're going to have the sign out just like we did. And then we're going to add another list in here. So this list looks like nothing special, but it is using a Firestore stream. So this data is streamed directly from Firestore and I can prove it to you. We can add a document with auto ID. Now if we type in name and give it a new name, of homo sapiens is another book i enjoyed if we add that we should see it up here by itself automatically streamed to the app notice it didn't do anything within the app it just got updated automatically as soon as we added so that's what we're going to do and we're going to do that with provider as well so let's get into the code so here i'm using the code we developed in the last app where we created the authentication stream we're going to be building on top of that. We're going to introduce Firestore streams for this too. So first thing we need is the Cloud Firestore package. Let's import that and save it. And we're going to add a couple new files. So we're going to have a book.dart. And we're going to add a new service called database.dart. And that should be it. So for the new book model, we're gonna keep it simple again, like last time. Class, book, have a name for the book in there, and that's that's all that we need here. We're just trying to demonstrate how this works. So this dot name. All right. Once we have this, let's go to the root. Here in the home, we're going to wrap this in a stream provider. So we wrap that in a new widget and let's call it stream provider. So the type of the stream provider is going to be a list of books. And we're going to do stream provider dot value as well. So here what it's saying is we're going to stream a list of books it's complaining because i need to add the value of what it's going to be so for now the value is going to be no and here we're going to want to get the stream from our database so let's create this actual value here we'll do that in our database file to access our database we're going to need an instance of Firestore. And then this next function is going to be a, a little bit complex and annoying, but we'll break it down. So we want to return a stream of list of books. Right. And we want to do get books. Let's do books multiple. Let's add that book in there as well. So back in our root, we didn't have any value. We can do database dot books. So there we go. If the users is not no, we provide a list of books to the whole home page. If it is no, we go back to login. So hopefully that makes sense. And the stream value of list of books that we will provide, we get from database.books. So now for that complex little equation, we're going to return from Firestore the collection that we're going to call books. And you get a stream by calling snapshots. So this snapshots returns a query snapshot which is fine if we were returning a query snapshot and then doing all the parsing and everything later on in the app. But since we want to do it here, or at least I want to do it here, we can map this query snapshot to a list of books. So we take map and then we have this event, which is a query snapshot. Let's make it explicit to say query snapshot. 
So we have that query. And we can take the query snapshot and retrieve the documents from it. But this document needs to be in the list of book format. So let's map that to book with the name of e dot data name. So that will take this document snapshot e, take the data name out of it, and create a book object. Let's let's update this to actually show off better what's going on in the background. Document snapshot, document snapshot, and then let's replace this e with document snapshot. So here we parse, uh, we take all the documents, make them into book objects. But then also we need to create a list out of this. So bring it back to a list. And there we go. This little complex equation ends up giving us a list of books that we can return to the rest of the app. So now all that's left to do is to actually display that list. So we're gonna be displaying it if you remember using the stream provider. For this exact implementation, I don't think we really need to use provider, but I just wanted to show off with the provider so that you can actually expand on this code later on. So the way we get that is we get our list of books in here and import books again. We can call that book list is equal to provider dot of and we need to import that of course provider dot of list books and then context so here we will be having our complete book list now you can't really just display this book list we need to put it in a list view but one thing to note here is that this is retrieved through providers. So we have only the home page wrapped in this, but let's say we wrap this stream provider around the whole app in the main. We wrap the stream provider in here. We'd be able to use it throughout any app, throughout any page in our app. And it will be very simple to get the stream of books anywhere throughout the app. So let's have this actually display the code that we want. Let's wrap this in the list view. Move that center on accident, but we're going to need to do it anyways. So wrap this in the list view builder. Delete that, and builder needs the item builder function. So we can add our raise button in there. Now we need to return that now. And we can then we also put in an item count of book list dot length plus one. We're gonna add the plus one so we can add the sign up button at the end. I'm not sure if this is the cleanest way to do this, but the point of this tutorial is to show how to implement Firestore streams with provider, not to have the cleanest UI. <laughs> So if the index is booklist.length, meaning it's the last thing in the list, we're going to return this raise button. Otherwise, we're going to return a row with children. And those children will have a text of book list index dot name. All right, so let's actually try to run this app now. So 
So here we have our app and you saw that little error message we had. So error message is getter length was called on null. So this length is called on null. That's because we didn't have our book list stream yet, ready yet. One simple way to fix this is book list does not equal null. Display list view dot builder. Otherwise display text that says loading. Now we shouldn't see that error anymore. We'll refresh. Perfect. So that's, like I said, I'm not sure if this is the cleanest UI solution, but I don't really see a, a UI thing where you would have a list of things and at the bottom you have a sign out. You probably want to put a sign out here or something. But let's see if the actual app works now. So let's create a collection. Books was a collection we wanted to create. Give it an automatic ID, name, and brave new world, which is my favorite book, by the way. You can check it out in the description if you want. So save it, and hopefully we see it show up right there. Perfect. And just one little annoying thing that I didn't do. Set main axis alignment to center. I don't like how it looks over there. Then we can add as many things as we want. The name Homo sapiens. Save. And it shows up right there. So that's it. Um, in this app, we didn't do any special thing like actually being able to add a book from the from the actual app, but you could do that. That shouldn't be too hard. Just add another database and use set data. But that's not the point. I have other videos that teach you how to do that, so feel free to check it out. It'll be in a card somewhere. You can expand on this all you want. Since it's in a provider, that means you have access to this book list in any child widget under this stream provider. So you can set up your architecture however needed and you can display this on multiple pages. Maybe you want a list and you want to only show top three but then when you click into it, you see all of them. That could be one scenario where you would use this. So there's a lot of ways you can expand on this but this is the very basics of how you stream data from Firestore. So this code will be on GitHub. If you have any questions or anything, leave it in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share the video if you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.